Bonjour. Hello, welcome to Beirut. Welcome to the exclusive interview with the Prime Minister of Lebanon, Mr. Saad Hariri. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for hosting us. Mr. Prime Minister, you're about to take an important trip to Europe, Paris, Berlin and Brussels, where an international conference on the situation of the Syrian refugees is about to start. The situation is almost disastrous. The UN has announced that there are now more than 5 million Syrian refugees. Lebanon is primarily impacted. There's about 1.5 million Syrian refugees in Lebanon. And you are saying your country is on the verge of disruption. Is that the situation in Lebanon? We are host to 1.5 million Syrian refugees. Because of the war in Syria, this war in Syria has had a big impact on the whole of the region. Our duty is to welcome them, but it is also the duty of the international community to take its share of responsibility in the face of the problem in Syria and the Syrian refugees. Lebanon has around 4.2 to 4.5 million inhabitants. If we add 1.5 million Syrian refugees and 500,000 Palestinian refugees, that means that we welcome nearly half of our population are refugees, 40 percent are refugees. The Lebanese people cannot bear this pressure much longer because it has a negative impact in terms of unemployment, which is high in the Lebanon, pressure on electricity, distribution and other services, such as health care. And as I have said regarding jobs, for us today, the situation is unbearable, is unsustainable. We have suffered. The international community must take its responsibility. Growth in Lebanon is only at 1%. Things have to change in collaboration with the international community, which must invest in Lebanon. Well, to put it clearly, are you saying that really are you sounding the alarm? Are you saying, be careful, should this go on, Lebanon might, let's say, implode, maybe this word is too excessive, but you want to warn the international community. What I want to say to the international community is that it is not the re exclusive responsibility of Lebanon to assume the consequences of the refugees. The international community must take its share of responsibility with uh, Lebanon. We have welcomed these refugees and we are not going to take any measure that would undermine their interests. The international community, if it does not invest in Lebanon, the Lebanon will have to take measures to see how those refugees could find another place to find refuge other than in Lebanon. Which steps? We heard about a possible return of Syrian refugees to some areas in Syria. We know this has been discussed. Is this what you're saying? Or would they go to Europe or elsewhere? No, no. For us, the refugees, if there are safe zones protected by the United Nations, they can go there, of course. But as the state of Lebanon, thinking of sending refugees, Syrian refugees, to other parts of Syria is not possible. We will not put ourselves in that situation. But if the Syrians want, because of the, the miserable situation they have in Lebanon, go back to Syria, it's their responsibility. We can cannot keep control over that. We ask the international community to help us. We've been asking this for six years. We've been saying that we need a special project for Lebanon and Jordan to protect our societies, the Lebanese society and the Syrians. The international community must understand that, of course, we want to provide education, services, work to the Syrians. But I'm the prime minister of Lebanon. I'm responsible for the Lebanese people. We want to help the Syrian refugees, but we don't have uh, enough resources sources to welcome so many refugees. Does it mean 
I mean, like Turkey did so. Are you saying to the Europeans, beware, if you do not help us, the refugees will leave, including for Europe? We hear about tensions. We don't say that these refugees must go away. We say that if the situation deteriorates in Lebanon, we cannot keep control over those refugees. We therefore ask for a lot of investments in Lebanon, which means investing so that these, Lebanon, these refugees can stay in the Lebanon. They will stay, of course. But in the end, they must go home. They cannot stay here indefinitely. As soon as the war in Syria is over, they will be able to go back to Syria as soon as there are safe zones protected by the United Nations. They will go there. What we say now is that Europe is refusing to welcome these refugees. You're right. Because Europe cannot do so. So we are welcoming them. And that's why we say to Europe, to the United States, to the international community, there is a country that is welcoming these refugees. What are you doing to help that country? We thank the international community for humanitarian aid, but that isn't enough, because Lebanon and Jordan... How much would you need, Mr. Prime Minister, frankly speaking? We talked about 15 billion over five years. No, 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 no. You're going to Brussels. You'll ask for a material support. We say in Lebanon that this investment project is very important. It will enable us to rebuild the Lebanon. This project will serve the interests of the Lebanese, first of all, and then it will make it possible to provide educational services, healthcare services, create jobs for the Syrians, the Syrians who can work in Lebanon in jobs where they are authorized to work. The international community sometimes criticizes us. They say we must authorize the Syrians to work in the Lebanon. We have no problem with that. But in France, in Germany, or in other countries, in Europe, if there is a refugee who arrives, or any Arab citizen who arrives, to work, there is a list of jobs, of functions, which they are authorized to occupy, and they need a work permit. It's the same thing in the Lebanon. We have jobs which are open to Syrians and jobs which are reserved for Lebanese people. How much will you ask from the international community to support Lebanon? We want the international community to invest over the next seven years between 10 and 12 billion dollars over a period of seven years. We know our capabilities, our capacity, we know our needs, and I think that this project will serve the interests of the Lebanese first and foremost. If we build bridges, universities, hospitals, if we strengthen our electricity generation capabilities, our communication, this will serve the interests of the Lebanese first, and then it will give jobs to the Syrians. I'd like to ask you a question about the crisis in Syria. You probably noticed a certain glitch, some even say it changed the position of the U.S. administration of France uh, about Bashar al-Assad. We heard the U.S. Secretary of State said that the fate of Bashar al-Assad will be decided by the Syrians, while for years the Western world has repeated time and again that Bashar al-Assad had to go. What do you think about that? There is no change of position between the Europeans and the Americans. Since the beginning, the Europeans have said it's up to the Syrians to decide on their own destiny. And the Americans today say that the question of Bashar al-Assad is not a priority. They've been asking for the departure of Bashar al-Assad for years. We all asked for that, but now we see that there are international forces that are present in Syria, and for that reason we repeat our position, which is up to the Syrians to decide who will be their president. Even if the entire international community designates one person, and if the Syrians say no, it will be no. 
Today, we are fighting a war against uh, the Islamic State group, against extremists. This war, we are fighting, and we will win. So you do not exclude that Bashar al-Assad could stay in power, should the Syrians say so? I think there are forces which want to keep Bashar al-Assad in power. But for me, it's not the solution. The solution is to get rid of Islamic State group and Bashar al-Assad. We mustn't forget that those who killed 700,000 Syrians was not Islamic State group. It was the regime. And it's for that reason, if the international community wants to have the responsibility to have on their conscience such a crime, for me, the international community would be committing a very serious mistake. There might be a period during which the peace process or the political change could include the presence of all Syrians to come to an agreement on how to manage this period, this transitional period. Why not? One of the reasons why Bashar al-Assad is in a stronger position now than some years ago is the military role played by Hezbollah in Syria. A clear cut and assumed role. Now, this is an issue for Lebanon. It's a touchy issue here for you. The fact that Hezbollah is active in Syria and is storing its weapons in Lebanon, is this endangering your country? There's no doubt that there is a fundamental disagreement between us and the Hezbollah a political disagreement and a different approach. The difference today in Lebanon is that we have agreed that the political disagreement between us and Hezbollah must not prevent the management of the country. For me, what the Hezbollah are doing is wrong, is not appropriate. Their position is correct, they think, but I disagree. I cannot say anything to change the point of view of the Hezbollah, and they won't change my position. Therefore, let's be clear. We have a disagreement. We say that what the Hezbollah are doing has an impact on the situation in the country, and Hezbollah refuses to accept that. But we have all agreed on the need to serve the interests of the country. Don't you think that Hezbollah could also trigger a new war with Israel? Don't you fear that? I think it's Israel that wants to wage war against Lebanon, not the Hezbollah. Israel doesn't want the Arabs to have a place where they can live in peace. Look at the infringements that Israel has committed every day, violations of our airspace, of our territorial waters, incursions on our land. Aren't you fearing a provocation by Hezbollah? No, I don't fear their provocations. I'd like to get to Saudi Arabia. Following the Arab League summit in Amman, you traveled to Saudi Arabia on board of the jet of King Salman. There are some tensions with Saudi Arabia. A arms contract has been suspended. Uh, one uh, arms deal with France. The Saudis asked their nationals to stop traveling to Lebanon following the statements about Iran. During this flight, did you get guarantees that Saudi Arabia would renew its commitment regarding the arms deal that has been suspended? Our position is based on the following principle. Our relationship with Saudi Arabia is a historic relationship. We've had some little problems over the last two years. Our duty is to restore our relationship with Saudi Arabia and to return to the preceding situation. Are they back to normal? We agree to to create a high-level committee between Lebanon and Saudi Arabia, this committee will study all the aspects, the economic, military aspects, Saudi Arabia 
has shown openness regarding Lebanon and, God willing, the situation will become normal again and the situation will improve. About this arms deal with France, $3 billion, will it resume? We're going to continue consultations for one month with the Saudis. Now that I have come back to Lebanon, we're going to form this uh, committee. This committee will study the industrial, economic, military aspects, so we will cover all the subjects in this committee. We will sign agreements. We will continue uh, the dialogue regarding this file of arms deals with the French. I discussed this subject with the Saudi authorities, and this subject will be dealt with within the next month. So you're rather optimistic. I'm always optimistic. I'm optimistic by nature. Pessimist, pessimism isn't in my vocabulary. Very last question about Lebanon. There were lots of debates about the electoral law. Are you being optimistic about the adoption of an electoral law and about elections being held? at long last and in due time. I don't think that in the current situation we are able to organize elections on the dates that have been planned. We're going to reform, to amend the electoral law. This electoral law is a very old one. It will apply to many future elections. We're going to introduce proportional representation and make other amendments. But this is a new development in Lebanese politics. We are behind. There is a delay. These delays are mainly due to technical dysfunctions, and I'm sure I'm optimistic about the organization of these elections very soon. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you for watching this exclusive interview here in Beirut. Stay tuned on France 24 for more news.